So, uh, yeah, tell me what you were hoping to get out of this branding session today. Clarity, simplicity, and ultimately, man, I want to I wanted take everything I've created over the last seven years and, like, package it into the Nathan Kohlerman today with the vision of Nathan Kohlerman 10 years from today and the impact he's making and the message he's sharing. Okay, cool. So I'm going to take you through this uh, eight years to eight weeks framework cool. uh, branding process. Um, back in 2016, when I was making the jump from business coaching to more of the branding, um, I was out in the hallway with uh, this past um, president of the National Speakers Association and um, he's good friends with him. I'm just talking about what I was doing in business and branding and whatnot. And I know he had a background in that. And um, he said something that was really pivotal to our agency. And he said, what I've noticed about most people in business is that it takes them about eight years to find their true, real, authentic brand. And when he said that, I was just like, damn, that's so true. It does take people a lot. And so that question kept going in my mind, like, why does it take people eight years to, to really find it? And so over the course of that period of time, and probably still to this day, I'm always thinking like, how do you cut through that faster? So let's call the eight years to eight weeks. AI can help you even do it in half the time. So we're just going to go through the framework, see where you're at with your brand, where do you want to be, where you ultimately see yourself. Um, what's important to you when building brand, when building a business? We'll talk about what do you feel like are some of the barriers you're coming up against, and then we'll talk about you know your game plan, um, and then we'll talk about some strategy. We'll get into culture. Um, the brand builds the culture. The culture builds the brand, right? You know this, and mm -hmm. I know that's something that was important to you. Um, in this latter stage of your career is like building meaningful relationships, people over profit, right? So uh, go into that and then we'll talk about um, your story. What's the story behind the brand? What's the new story you're going to lead with? And then uh, wrap it up and tie and then talk about a little bit about marketing strategy moving forward. Don't. Does that sound good? Oh, yeah. So going back to everything, tell me a little bit about like what you want your business and brand to be in this next year. Like what do you envision it doing? Tell me a little bit more, paint me a picture. Yeah, for me it's, it's the first thing is inspiring hope, right? It's, it's looking at the darker elements, right? From people who have achieved a relative amount of success to a tremendous amount of success people who have made the money, people who have, you know, found themselves, but really they're still lacking something or they're still battling with their mental health or they're still unable to create something in the world that's meaningful to them and, and lacking a creative and sustainable process to it. And that's, that's something I really like to see is, is through one conversation, can someone have a new vision for their dream? like through one conversation or through a series of conversations or a series of sessions or a series of experiences through an immersive, you know, sessions, which we kind of talked about how and what is that really giving them? Right. And, and it's helping them tune into a deeper part of their authentic self. Mm -hmm. Right. So how to actually become really, truly 100% authentic mm -hmm. which creates the like unfuck withableness yeah. <laughs> that they have and and their creativity and their self-expression their authentic expression becomes their creative process and from that creative process they're able to develop something and create something and do something meaningful whether that's for people profit or even non-profit you know to, to create change do you see yourself mostly facilitating events do you see yourself um doing like mastermind groups one-on-one -on -one coaching like where do you where do you see yourself being the most happy and fulfilled in, in your coaching business? Yeah, I mean, for me, it's, it's I love to be on stage. Yeah, I love to be on stage because I can share everything within an hour that I would with somebody over 10 sessions. Yeah. <laughs> I, can, I can give everybody an accelerated pathway. And from that, number one, I have so many different offers. I can sell my book from a stage, mm -hmm. right? I can go into other masterminds and retreats, I want to contribute to what people already have that are built, that are already successful. I don't really have a desire to create a mastermind. Okay. I have a desire to create a community of what I would call these rebels with a cause. Okay. You know, these black sheep of society who are 
creating these these earth shattering revolutionary movements, especially, you know, with hopes to restore humanity, you know, with the way technology and AI and all this shit is going, you know, having and and remembering the the power of human connection. Okay. Do you see yourself, I know we were talking a little bit earlier, is it more like creating your own events or is it mostly going to other businesses and holding them? Like where do you see the majority of your income coming in? I would see the majority of mine going into other people's existing masterminds, retreats, groups. And from there doing this, um, you know, something that's emerging recently that I'm really enjoying is coming in as a facilitator and a speaker. Okay. So I become one of their key speakers and normally these are masterminds or retreats that are entrepreneurship based, right? They're real estate agents or they're private equity investors or they built a really successful business, but now they're starting wanting to go deeper into their spirituality. Okay. And that's kind of where I found my niche is, is like successful business owners and entrepreneurs who are wanting to get more in tune with their spiritual self. Okay. You know, because their financial self is good. Okay. Right. So that's more of your focus versus creating your own? For right now. For right now. For right now. What would it, and we can come, we can circle back to this at the end. I just want to throw something out there. So you got these people that are bringing you in. What if you threw out this package to businesses and you say, hey, maybe this is something you already do. Hey, I can create this two to three day immersive experience Mm -hmm. and here's what it looks like and I can help you organize it and here's how much I would charge for it. Yeah. Or is it mostly coming into something that's already created and trying to pitch your value there? I think you can go both ways. Yeah. You know, I think it's kind of like a, um, there's one like done for you model and then there's another like do it with you model. Like the done for you is like, Hey, I can come in, I can help you create and facilitate this two to three day experience, which is what I'm doing with Princeton. Yeah. I came in as a co-host and now we're creating this like two day, um, you know, retreat, this like boutique style retreat. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be doing another one. I might be going to London and doing a full day, one day retreat with my friend Camellia. I might, you know, I'm going into this retreat, this mastermind in Canada, but they already have it pre-established. This is a, this is an already operational group of 50 real estate investors where they're like, we already have a plan, but like we want a breathwork facilitator. And then we want some additional support for mental health while they're there. And it's like, cool, we can explore that too. So it's kind of, again, situational, ideally, there's a lot of logistical components in the co-hosting and creating of the experiences, which I'm not against, Mm -hmm. but what I've found, and we'll see how it converts and, and, and if it really is fully fulfilling, but I do like finding these collaborative partnerships to, to create these experiences where people already have pre-existing communities of like entrepreneurs, but I'm kind of the, the more spiritual element yeah. and I kind of bring that in to theirs already pre-existing ecosystem mm-hmm. and kind of help it deepen and go deeper into that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Does that make sense? Do, so you have someone that has their mastermind already put together. So you go to them and say, Hey, let's create something. Um, let's create an immersive experience. And then what's that sales process like from there? Yeah, that's kind of where I've, what's been, what it's been is we'll reach out, we'll do a connection call from the connection call or have the meaning call, meaningful conversation. After the meaningful con- conversation, I'll have the proposal, I'll follow up in 24 to 48 hours. Mm-hmm. And then once that follow up is, then we'll do another call. So it's normally a two call close. Okay. Um, normally, if it needs to be a four call close, I can imagine that's going to be a bigger experience, like four or five days would probably need, need to be like a two plus call close. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, let's circle back to this Yeah. and in, in everything. I'll just get an overview, but it sounds like um, partnering with other people's number one, doing your own stuff, number two, and then coaching being a three. I would say it's like speaking and and getting my book out is number one. Speaking, getting your book out. Speaking and doing my book. Um, You know, because that's kind of where the community already opens up. Okay. And you're saying pretty busy doing that. Yeah. Or you want to be more busy doing that. Yeah. I mean, that's where I've been transitioning is away from coaching Mm -hmm. and into my speaker's primary business. And that's after I did my my training with Speaker Lab and Grant Baldwin. Yeah. Um, The objective was to make speaking my primary. main thing. And my book. That's a tough, that's a tough business model. 100%. Hundred percent. Yeah, <laughs> it's a tough business model. Yeah, and that's kind of where the secondary. It's kind of like cool if that's not performing or whatever. And I use a software 
to find paid speaking gigs. And of course, I could go into the National Speakers Association or yeah. these other associations that look for that. Yeah. But until I have enough experience, yeah, number one would be going into masterminds, crafting different keynotes, uh -huh. and then from those keynotes, already having them done, prepared, ready to go, then transitioning and flipping it on its back and then going speaking first. So uh, it's kind of like using the masterminds and retreats and group experiences that I'm doing these collaborative visions with. Mm -hmm. It's almost using these as like my alpha and beta tests as I'm building these keynotes in real time. Okay. And then once I find my primary three, then I'll go all in on speaking. Okay. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. What do you feel like your brand, what is that? What do you feel like your brand needs to do? What do you feel like the brand needs upgraded? I would say honestly, just having a very clear and simple roadmap on what am I prioritizing? Okay. Right. And by, is, by prioritizing, what do you mean by that? It means like as me as Nathan Kohlerman, it's like I'm a CTO for a neuro gummy company. I'm a fractional COO for two other companies. Okay. I'm in the best selling author. I'm a speaker. I'm a coach. I'm a counselor. I'm a breathwork facilitator. I'm a so dad, many different a things, brother, right? right? Yeah. A dad, a father to So four, you're trying to figure out like, what's that title. Yeah. I mean, I like spiritual psychopath. That's okay, just spiritual psychopath. really like the alter ego. I told you I'm not like a brand. I want to be more of a personality. Okay. Right. Okay. Who, who is capable of doing and fulfilling all of these things. But really, for Nathan Coleman, how is Nathan Coleman showing up online? What is making Nathan Coleman so magnetic that people are just like, I need to find out more, and more than likely, I'm going to be able to help you. More than likely, I'm going to be able to see and, and hear and listen to what you're up to in the world, mm -hmm. and I'm going to find a way to work with you. I'm going to find a way to contribute and, and create that you know, people over profit model. Okay. I got a good exercise for you that you've probably done on some level, mm -hmm. um, but I think it would be really good for you to go back through again in this different light. Mm -hmm. um, so I just want to, I want to show this to you really quick. This is something that I've gone through a lot. Um, you know, uh, it's called uh, understanding your cycles. Mm. And so sometimes we're back here and we're like, man, I should be clear up here. Mm -hmm. It's like our spirit knows we can be up here. It's like, well, why are we back here? Well, because we went through these cycles, mm. right? And then you start to add up these cycles, so you'd be much further, right? And yeah. so once you could see the cycle, stop the cycle, but the more you can have seen the cycles you've went through, you can help people going through their cycles. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. So this is a cool exercise that I have a lot of people do through the branding process. So we... Go through the stop sign. So on top is when you're kicking ass, taking names. This is your phase one. Yep. Phase two is usually when you slip. Phase three is usually you're hanging on. Phase four is when you're falling. Phase five is you've hit the ground. Huh. You're, right now. <laughs> I don't think you're there right now. I think that was the dark and I mean, you talk about your addiction, right? Yep. Do you talk about it openly or like how, how much do you share? How do you decide what to share, what not to share? I mean, formerly, right? Like addiction has been a battle of mine for 18 years and it has not been a linear process whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And I mean, even today, as I'm sharing this, I'm 85 days completely substance free. Mm -hmm. You know, that is not a long time, right? But I look at anything substance wise being, you know, pills, powder, people, drugs, and drinking, mm -hmm. no matter what that means, you know, and, and this goes so far into codependency as mm -hmm. much as it does drug abuse, as much as it does alcoholism, as much as it does, you know, relying a little bit too much on Kratom mm -hmm. to get through my productivity hours. Sure. Right. So this is the first time I'm actually clear, which I'm assuming like by number six, that's probably actually where I am. Uh, <laughs> I would say you're right here, honestly, oh, but right. you, but you <laughs> I could, guess. I mean, this is yours. This isn't mine. Yeah. Six is when we're like, all right, enough's enough. 
Oh, okay. This is when people commit suicide. This is the dark, like this is the darkest, okay. right? The world's on top of you. Yep, and then, yep, yep. you know, um, making changes is always the hardest, you know, it's like yeah. climbing upside down. Right. Right. And then you start to get some momentum going into phase seven. Right. And climbing then up the hill. you're crawling and then you're back up at the top. Yep. So in each one of these phases, what okay. I would say, um, and, and a lot of really good content comes from this too. Right. Right. Cause I, I believe the best content is where someone goes, wow, they're going through the pain that I'm going through right now. Mm -hmm. And I can, em they can empathize with me, but also I feel like they're on the other side of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I so really like this by the way. I've never actually seen this. The only one I've seen is like Tony Robbins life cycle and his mm -hmm. business cycle. Mm -hmm. But this is way easier and way more effective to comprehend. Just gonna add that. Yes, the, I, I learned this from one of my first coaches and I've just kind of taken it and really brought it around the branding conversation. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Dr. Joe Dispenza talks about this. He says, most people are incredibly inaccurate when recalling their own experiences. I don't know if you've ever heard him talk yeah. about that. Yeah. And they were asking him how much, he said up to 50 to 60% inaccurate. Wow. And usually the proof we take away from the experience is usually the emotion we have going into the experience. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So this allows us to like really take a step back and really go, okay, what the fuck did I actually get go through, right? right. And so each one of these phases, we want to identify these things. <clears throat> so the first one we want to identify is how are we feeling? Number two is what were we thinking? AKA what stories were going through my mind. We want to identify what were our specific actions and then for what were the results. Right. Okay. So there's a lot of different ways you can look at uh, the cycle. You can go through relationship cycle. This could be a health cycle, mm -hmm. career cycle. <clears throat> what I would say, and this is what I believe, I think most people that struggle I think most of your clients that you can help, they have some form of addiction yeah. that they don't want to face quite yet. Right. Whether that's overeating food, mm -hmm. whether that's porn, whether that's... So I think you should almost focus on the addiction cycle. Right. But yeah, I could be wrong. You could focus on a business cycle, but in each <laughs> one of these phases, you want to identify, okay, when I'm on top of the world, kicking ass, taking names, how am I feeling? What am I thinking? We think in visualizations, we think in story form, right? Yep. Actions, this is where I'd say like be super specific, mm -hmm. right? Be super specific and then results. And then let me know when you go through the entire thing, there's one more step to the process that helps tie it all in. Cool. That's really powerful, okay? So, if, so going back to like which cycle should you focus on? Right. Right. I would focus on the cycle that is most relevant to the people that you want to help in this next phase of your business. Right. Okay. Okay. Does that way better? Does that help? Yep. So this is actually great. Yeah. Idea. Yeah. It's a really cool exercise. Um, okay. So now we get into like our, our messaging of our business. And so I like to draw this diagram. Connor has seen it a million times. He could probably draw it himself by now. <laughs> but here we are, the cornerstone of our brand, right? We are our brand. Mm -hmm. And so our brand consists of everything we believe, everything we do, and then everything we have experienced. Yep. Right? Our, our mind, our body, our spirit, our identity, our actions, our results, right? All of these things come back to the cornerstone of a brand. And then we go, okay, I got my brand. The next phase of the business is, okay, now I gotta go out there and I gotta market it. What am I marketing? I'm marketing how I serve people. And then through the process of serving people, I'm gonna create money. Mm -hmm. And if we look at this, and if it was real blocks, it all come crashing down, right? Right. And so there's things within the brand that we haven't got really clear on. And so I refer to these as your four W's. 
So these are the questions that every brand, the best brands answer, whether they're conscious about it or unconscious, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. So the first one, okay, is essentially why do you do what you do? What's the purpose? What's the meaning give you? I'm sure you've heard Tony Robbins talk about your human evolutionary needs. Yep. Right. And the highest human, human evolutionary need is fulfillment, which is giving. Mm -hmm. So your brand, why is helping give something. So what is that? What is that thing? What's the purpose? So if we were to identify that real quick with your brand, why does your, why do you do what you do? usually starts with i believe mm -hmm. that the fullness of who we are requires us to go through the dark yeah i believe yeah i believe that we only find our authenticity through our suffering we only find our authenticity through our suffering so i would write that out and this is where chat gpt comes in yeah. so you throw it there hey give me 10 more things that relate to this. And now you just start to wordsmith it. And I'll give you another like cool exercise to do to help you wordsmith this process. Okay. This is a bad, this isn't my best uh, drawing corner by far. <laughs> I've, draw, I've drawn much better uh, things here. Okay. And then the next one is the way that we do it. So the way is like our process, our formula. So two cookie companies could go in business because they have a similar why and their why could be because we believe that cookies bring families together because that's what grandma believed. But the way they do mm -hmm. cookies is that one does the thin crispy ones, one do the big cake ones. So now this is where you start to distinguish your brand like, okay, another person could have that similar why, but what's the formula? What's the success? What's the way to success? So if you were to identify like a three-step formula, what would that look like? To have people source authenticity in darkness. Okay. So I'll give you a little hint too. Um, usually I go off this formula. What do okay, I want people cool. to believe? What do I want them to do? And then what do I want them to have? Oh, perfect. So I want people to believe that the darkness is not an evil place. Okay. To do, I want them to be able to go into it to find clarity, certainty, safety, and significance in who they are and why they're here and have the confidence to be themselves in the world. Okay, so to sum this up, identify, discover. So we sum up, make it super simple. Yep. We identify our dark, we discover it. And then the have is the experience. So what's the experience or what would be that third step? Integrate new disciplines, integrate new yeah, integration. behaviors. Integration. Yeah, integration. So, so, if we're, so if we're simplicity, bring the simplicity, identify, discover, integrate. Yes. And then now we want to call it something. So what's the name of this formula? It's the darkness. The darkness <laughs> formula. It's the darkness to Dharma. Darkness to Dharma formula. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so some people go, well, that's way too simple. Perfect. We want it to be simple. We want people to understand. And then now as we start to go into it, like the first step, now we're creating a formula within a formula. Mm -hmm. everything's just formulas. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. So when I'm doing, so you got your four W's, right? Um, I'll go through and kind of show you the formula within the formulas here in a second. So now we got our next one, which is who do you work with? Mm. <clears throat> okay. Your who, and I think you've heard Ed Milet say this, is you are most qualified the person you used to be. Yeah. Right. And so you're helping a version of yourself. So when you're identifying the who, you're identifying their pain, and then you're identifying the pleasure. Yep. And then uh, I help coaches who are stuck in the mundaneness of their business and really want to bring more fulfillment and income through their coaching. Yeah. So you're identifying the pain and pleasure and then um, give them a name. Yep. If you were to give your avatar a name, what would you give them that they would be thrilled to accept that identity? Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, do you listen to Bradley? Yeah. The bomb squad. Yeah. Right. He calls them the bomb squad. Yeah, yeah. I sometimes refer to people as the next gen leaders, the next gen coaches. Yeah. So what would be that name that you could identify people that they'd be like, fuck yeah, that's me. Spiritual psychopath society. Spiritual psychopath society. There you go. Okay. So then we go into the last one. Okay. Which is what? So what's the transformation? Mm -hmm. 
So if I, if I believe this and I follow this and I have this pain and I have this pleasure, what's going to be the result? Mm -hmm. So now we want to sloganize it. So, so I refer to as our what is the it life. Okay, everyone wants the it life. They want to wake up knowing they've influenced people. They want to wake up knowing they've created income and then they have the time freedom. So yeah. it's, so I created a little acronym off that. Yeah. So with your what, what would that be? What would be that simple sloganized sentence? They'd be authentic leaders who actually are impacting the world. Okay, authentic. Yeah, so that's where we would want to wordsmith that. So there's mm -hmm. the first one. In the branding book that I have here, I have, uh, I have lines for people to write it down 18 times. Nice. Because I feel like what takes people um, so long to go through the branding process is they write the first thing that comes to their mind. And they go, yeah, that feels good. Right. And then months go by. They're like, oh, actually, it sounds better if I say it this way. And then they change it by a few words. And then months go by and they're like, nah, actually it sounds better this way. And mm. so I'd rather say, yeah. hey, let's shove all this time into a week and let's get, let's go through all those rough drafts. Why'd you choose 18 times? 18 times. I don't know. That's a good question. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's how many lines are in the book. <laughs> okay, cool. That makes <laughs> Questions that, I'm not prepared was, to answer. I thought there was some like neuroscience driven formula. I should. <laughs> I should. I should think of something. Yeah, so, like in NLP, they have like the seven layers of why. Yeah. Like why do you what you do and yeah. why do you is that important and why is that important and why is that important until they get to the real why. Yeah. And yeah. so yeah. kind of going back to your formulas, you're yeah. always creating formulas within formulas, right? Yeah. Um, and then you're putting infographics to them. So like this yeah. is you're putting vision to your process because we trust mm -hmm. our eyes more than we trust our ears. Right. Does that make sense? Yep. So the magician, the magician in us, the um, science nerd in us goes, that's way too simple. There's so much more steps, but mm -hmm. dude, your ideal client needs simplicity. You right. know what I mean? So, um, so the why, like my formula is when you're finding your why, it's when you're going into your human needs. That's how you find um, your why. And then you want to base it around the highest vibrating one, which is fulfillment. <laughs> your way um, is based upon laws of transformation. So there's certain laws that have to be in place. So I created uh, laws of transformation. Okay, like uh, there has to be some type of sacrifice and investment, right? You can't change unless there's some type of sacrifice investment. There has to be a state change, right? There has to be... Um, uh, a map to follow, right? There's certain things that have to be in place. Yeah. Your who, I go off the principles of uh, the principles of contrast. So, like in your terminology, you talk about like dark, right? Right. So dark and light is contrast. Yin mm -hmm. and yang is contrast. Contrast. Right. Conscious and subconscious. Right. Pain and pleasure. And so your who. Okay, is also, actually I'll tie that back in a second. And then the last one is your what. So what's the transformation? And your what is um, the cycle of transformation. So these are all formulas within the formula. And then to go even deeper, I align your four W's with uh, your leadership archetypes. Mm -hmm. So your why is speaks to a lover. And then your way, that's a magician. A magician wants to know the way, right? The who is the warrior. The warrior wants to know who are you. Um, who are you and am I the who that you help? And then your kings, right? They're all about identifying cycles and vision. So they want to know what the result is. Mm -hmm. So that's just an example of, of what we utilize. So now is we're coming up with these, and here's what I would say would be a better exercise to do before I even dive in those, that I was, I was I start to um, mind map your messages. Right. Okay, so you said uh, spiritual, spiritual psychopath. So what does spiritual psychopath mean? Spiritual psychopath is someone who has a crazy outlook on life with a grounded spiritual nature that is here to create change in the world beyond 
the status quo. Okay, so let's simplify. Crazy outlook that's grounded. What else? Uh, here to change the way things are. Change the way things are. Okay, what else? So people who own their crazy. Own their crazy. <laughs> like craziness is their superpower. What And what do you mean by crazy? Like, let's define that. Crazy in it. Being crazy is their authenticity, right? To be, to be crazy is to be authentic. To be authentic is to be goofy or how, whatever society seems, deems to be crazy. I'll give you an example, mm -hmm. right? I fully acknowledge that I have voices in my head, that I have these dialogues in my mind and they all have different dialects and tones and inflections. I'll have conversations with myself. Mm -hmm. And the average ordinary person, the muggle, mm -hmm. who walks down the street and says, fucking dude's crazy like just talking to himself it's like no i just have an understanding with myself and i have a way to communicate to these parts of me to, so so i don't go insane yeah right that to me is saying i know myself so well mm -hmm. that what society deems is crazy i normalize within myself yeah uh so, so this is where also we're creating slogans and like yeah. catchphrases right what would be another one you would mm -hmm. want to be associated with rebel with a cause rebel with a cause yeah um another one is um <laughs> Like the black black sheep of society. Black sheep of society. Yeah. So, um, as you're doing this, again, chat GPT, okay, and you want to use, you want to shrink your dictionary. Yep. A lot of people, I was writing a post, um, I can't remember when it was, and uh, I used the word community. And as I started to look at this word more and more, I'm like, why does that word look so fucking weird? Have you ever looked at a word so long? You're like, that's a weird word. <laughs> yeah, all the time. Yeah, I was like, that's weird, community. And it was bugging me why it felt so weird. And it's because that's not really part of my brand language. I use the word world. Mm. Trans, uh, your story can transform the world. The world needs you. Like I use world a lot in my brand language. Mm -hmm. So anytime you're putting together brand and brand messages your goal is to shrink that dictionary yeah. and give more meaning to it and the example i give um to this and i'll have to send you a really cool video it's this mentalist and he invites these influencers into the room and he says do you think because you're an influencer you're less susceptible to being influenced and they're like yeah he's like hmm, interesting <laughs> anyways he has them um, he has them uh, go to the selfie museum and he has all these props and he says I want you to take a picture a bunch of pictures and then he comes back I want you to take one picture with one prop and then I want you to put a hashtag and they go through their phone of all their shit and then they put it and then they're just like sitting there like making sure that the other person's not seeing it right and then he goes uh, and pulls down his post and it's a post of him on this watermelon with an ice cold tray and the hashtag is ice ice baby and one by one they flip up their phone they all posted the exact same fucking thing hmm. on the watermelon with ice tray with the word hashtag ice ice baby mm -hmm. and they're sitting there like how in the hell did you do that because he because all he did was just tell them a little bit about the exercise and what they didn't realize is why he was explaining it, he was showing some of his posts. Hmm. And he kept repeating these words over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it was a, it was a um, I make all my clients watch it because it's a good example of how you need to get your brand repeating messages. Right. Right. Any questions on this part of it right here? No, that makes sense. So that's going into like your brand messages. And then from some of these words, now we start to use these words into our program names, our podcast names, mm -hmm. our mastermind names, right? So um, like my podcast, the story behind the brand, yep. right? So you start to integrate similar messages and all the different things to create that uniform, okay? Now we go into creating your culture. And so in your workbook, and I'll give you this that you can use after, in the workbook, it just asks you a lot of really good questions. Um, the most important part of my culture is, what would you say for you? Fully accepting of one's 
authentic nature. Okay. Whatever that means for them. Yeah, I want to make sure every member on my team feels. Yeah, everyone feels seen, heard, accepted, seen. and loved beyond their limitations. Okay, love it. And so now we want to list out all our core values. Yep. The way that I have people do this though is making sure that we're integrating our core values within the four archetypes of ourself. Mm -hmm. When I look at some companies and I look at their values, I was like, those are all warrior values or right. those are all lover values. They don't incorporate a really good like a comprehensive ecosystem. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So to jump right back into um, your leadership archetypes, and I wanna kind of dive down into this too, because I think this is important going back to the brand foundation. So you got your lover. The lovers are based around connection. Yep. They're uh, very heart-centered. Uh, they make decisions based upon how they feel. Um, this would, if we're comparing it to like the elements, I would say they're the earth, right? The grounding. Mm -hmm. um, and then we got our magicians. Magicians are the analytical people, the ABC. They're all about uh, maps and organization. Yeah. The ABC, the one, two, three. If you ask a magician, okay, when you're helping a magician make a decision, you're going to ask them how they think. So they make decisions based upon how they think. The warriors are the executors, the doers, right? They're the thing, they're, I, I would call them, they're all about action, getting things done. Uh, warriors make decisions based upon what you need to do. Right. Okay, and then the kings are your grand leaders, your grand visionaries. Kings are going to make decisions. Okay, so, so I'll put visionary here. Um, kings are going to make decisions based upon how they want to be. Mm -hmm. Which archetype do you think you are? A mix between the king and the magician. I think you have a lot of lover. Oh, yeah. I would have guessed you would be a uh, king lover. Yeah, for sure. I think, I think right now... You have, a lot of magician, you have a lot of yeah. magician in you. You're very analytical. You like to study things. It needs to make mm -hmm. sense for you. Right. Obviously, you you know, your action. You have actually really good um, balance of all of them. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like, I think predominantly I may come from magician, but I think deep down, like, cognitively, like, I would say magician, of course, because that's what the magician does. But like deep down, like even as we like started our conversation, it's like I want to put people over profits, and that's yeah. like a total lover statement. Uh -huh. it's like I want to connect people, I want to like yeah. feel the culture, but more importantly, I want to create the climate so that way I can feel that culture. Who do you think your ideal client is? What archetype? They're definitely going to be in the lover category because normally, and I've studied this extensively, mm -hmm. uh, the shadow of the lover is the addict, mm -hmm. the addicted. They're the ones who want to connect and feel something because yeah. they're numbing out. There's, Constantly. Yeah. The, the way I explain it is um, when the sun first peaks over in the valley, you know, and you're outside, it's going to create the shadow going this way. Mm -hmm. And then as the sun comes up into the sky and it's highest in the sky, there's not a shadow. Right. And then as the sun fades again, then it creates this other shadow. So there's actually two shadows on each side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so um, without going too in depth, understanding the shadow of your ideal client too. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Which, so like disconnect. That's your shit, out. dude. Hundred percent, dude. It's the version <laughs> I, don't need I was to yesterday. To see you. <laughs> it's the version I was yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Um, I need to talk about this more because it's really interesting, fascinating. Um, mm -hmm. So, anyways, going back to your core values, the way that I have people structure it is, I'll say, hey, uh, list two words from each archetype. Yeah. Create um, uh, a slogan and then create a message. So that mm -hmm. way you don't have just these meaning, meaningless words that we throw around over and over, you know what I mean? Right. So right here, um, we updated ours, but love and appreciation, no one cares how much you know until they know how much you care. We commit yeah. to loving all people in this world and helping unveil their gifts so they can give more transformation to the world. We actually did three and then the world needs you. Mm -hmm. So just providing more depth. Right. Um, one of my uh, friends, uh, he uses the word, um, instead of creating values, what's your, what's your promise? 
What's your cultural mm. promise? What's your promise to your community? What's your promise to your client? I like that a lot. Right? So it's almost like a story form, which yep, I yep. which I really like. So yeah. I, I don't think there's a right or wrong way. It's all right, how much are you focusing on it? What are mm -hmm. exactly are you doing? And so now when you're starting to build your brand, the goal is where are you building your community online? Yeah. And offline. And offline. Yeah. And one is always going to support the other, right? Right. And for me, it's like my offline supports my online. Yeah. So I kind of have it a little bit more backwards than the average creator and coach today. Okay. Um, then we go to like basic shit that, you know, we were talking about earlier. So if I were to introduce Nathan on stage, what would be his title? Father of four first. Okay. That one. So, um, so that's where I list out, um, yeah, father of four, spiritual psychopath, best-selling author, international keynote speaker, and beacon of hope. Okay. I think you pretty much got him down. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, a lot of, I have a lot of them, but you know, it's, um, I mean, spiritual psychopath for sure is what I'm branding myself as. Okay. Um, and then now once you get here, then this is where I would come up with your, I would really set out your four W's. So it's mm -hmm. just like one sentence each. So when clients get to this part, right. um, I say, once you get this part done, text me your four W's. Right. If I open my phone and I see more than two sentences on each one, I go, nope. Go do it again. Nice. Simplify it to one sentence. Right. Okay, so your why comes down to one sentence. Your way comes down to one sentence. Your who, one sentence. Your what, one sentence. And then um, I would even go, what is my main slogan or slogans? Right. Okay. So these are all the facts. So as the saying goes, facts tell stories sell. So now the question is, how do I get all these facts integrated into the mind, body, and spirit of my mm -hmm. ideal clients? Right. Right. Okay. I think brands, I think sometimes we're, um, I shouldn't say sometimes. I think a lot of times we're good at getting our messaging into their minds, but it's not dropping down into their hearts, into their spirits. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the difference between that is the emotion, all um, the emotional charge behind your words. Mm -hmm. And the more you can bring emotional charge behind your words, the more impactful it's going to be. You don't remember anything unless there's motion and emotion, right? You've heard this? Yep. Right, which is why we don't remember shit in school. Yeah. Right. Because you're just <laughs> exactly. you're trying to go through the mind to memorize it, and that's right. not how we retain. So the best way to do that is through a form of a story. Mm -hmm. And so before we get to the story, we want to make sure that hey, we got all our four W's. We're very clear in the messages we want them to take away. Okay. And then where we want to go next is um, what are the myths of what I do. Mm. Okay, so spiritual psychopath, like he's satanic. So you'd write that out. Yeah. This guy's satan satanic, <laughs> right? So you, you want to identify, um, you've seen Eight Mile, right? Yeah. And he comes on at the very end, like his friend's like, dude, aren't you worried about what he says? And then like he comes on himself. and then he, yeah, exposes himself. Mm -hmm. And so this is kind of like mm -hmm. that exposing what could the people or people possibly say so you got the myths you got what i refer to as the limiting beliefs um i don't need no fucking life coach i don't need someone to tell me what the fuck to do right right so you just go through these and then from the limiting beliefs you want to write down what's the transformational beliefs the right. tbs what do you think is the greatest limiting belief that people have about what you do it's not gonna work it's not gonna work so what would be the transformational belief Right. That'll well, change your life. What I would say is it always works when you do the work. I like that way better. Yeah. <laughs> always works when you do the work, right? Right. Breath work is stupid. That's some woo woo shit. Right. So what's the, so getting just very clear on what are those myths? Okay. What are the limiting beliefs? And then writing really clear. What are the transformational beliefs? Right. Okay. 
So a lot of pre-work and then we lead into the story and you're going to have lots of stories yep. where I would focus my attention first is what is the story or the experience, they're the same thing, what is the experience that knocks over all the dominoes and by I mean dominoes is limiting beliefs, myths, or things that hold them back from allowing me to help them in their world. Mm, right. What is that experience I need to share that opens opens them up? Right. Right. Do you have any idea of what experience or experiences you need to share? Yeah, I have so many stories I could go with. Um, honestly, I, though, can it's... I can I ask some questions to maybe help you? This would be great. Come up with some, you know, you talk about being a spiritual psychopath. I think uh, an origin story of you getting into learning about the shadows. Yeah. Yep. What's that origin story? I mean, the origin story is a really bad breakup and quite literally having all the, the spiritual tools, right? Going to Landmark, going to MITT, going into personal development, thinking I had things figured out mm -hmm. until I was in a relationship and didn't even realize that I was the nar fucking narcissist. And- I remember you sharing this actually. Yeah, yeah, like I was the narcissist and it took her leaving me and me being in an apartment for three days all alone in the darkness mm -hmm. for me to realize that I'm the fucking problem. And then that was actually what served as the catalyst for me to seek deeper work within myself and look at all the areas mm -hmm. in my life where I have been put on a pedestal, where I didn't feel good enough and where I had to feel like I was so good that I had to become the best in the room. And like I had to become the superhero of the story because nobody else saw it. And I had to go into all those stories and all those beliefs and everything else. But it was that breakup that changed my life forever. Like, that breakup changed my life more than heroin addiction. Dude, <laughs> I feel like some of the best growth moments in my life have been through breakups. Yeah. That's how most men find the work. <laughs> most men find Isn't the work because up? someone broke our heart. <laughs> or we were fucked up and we broke their heart and then yeah. didn't accept blame until somebody broke our heart after that. <laughs> I, think, I think that's definitely one of the focal points of your story for sure. Mm -hmm. I also feel like there's a later story that people, so that opens them up to it. Mm -hmm. So now I feel like there's another experience that you need to share that really gets them to buy into your formula and your processes and actually see the possibilities of that working in their life. Right. Um, have you heard of the, have you heard of Joseph Campbell? Yes. Hero's Journey. Okay. So we won't cover that because you've already talked about that. Very much so. <laughs> but I, I, um, that's a, a framework of which to um, share your story. Let me show you another framework that yep. I've been utilizing um, to put together people's story. Yeah, I'd love to good? see yours for sure. Okay. So the first one is I start the, the first of it and it doesn't always come. What, what we found is it doesn't always come uh, the one we pro, the one we start off with as the the hook isn't always what we end up using as the hook. Sometimes right. it comes from later. So the hook is that attention grabber right from the get go that opens up to the dialogue. Right. And it's usually motivational and inspirational. How would you define inspirational and motivational? I mean, motivational is like I read this and I want to do something about it. Inspirational is this really inspired me to do exactly what he did. Yeah, the way I would say is motivation is fear, inspiration is love, motivation is mm. dark, that's pushing you forward, inspiration is light that you're seeking oh, after. I like that. So um, the best hooks are motivational and inspirational. Yeah. Right? Um, going back to like, are you, uh, did you just get your heart broke from being in a relationship and you really just want to be in an unconditional relationship where there's love from both sides. Mm -hmm. So motivational, inspirational, what's that hook yeah. that you're just going to reach out and grab their attention? <laughs> what if the way you've been trying to change your life is completely counterproductive to how, I don't even know, how, how would you finish Did that your sentence? ex just called you a narcissist? <laughs> That's what I would say. Did your ex just call you a narcissist? Did your ex just call you a narcissist? If so, read below. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and I feel like um, 
and I need to do I have I have a folder on my Google Drive that it's dedicated to hooks because mm. the most important part of your post is the hook yep. grabbing their attention yep. so I feel like I would spend a lot of time on hooks mm -hmm. right and so hook then goes into um, and sometimes we use this in the video sometimes we don't we go into an intro statement so mm. the intro statement is essentially hi my name is And then it essentially goes through your whys. Hi, my name is Travis Brady. I believe your story can transform the world. The way I do this is through sharing your story. And I help leaders who want to be brand leaders of their industry create more influence, income, and time freedom. Right. So you just go through. So I call that your intro statement. Right. So essentially sums up everything you do in one sentence. Right. Um, we don't always use that. Sometimes we just... Go into it. And then the third one is, or then the next part is your backstory. So backstory. So before we go into the experience of I'm sitting in my house for three days in the darkness, what's the backstory that would give context about who you are? This could be growing up. This mm -hmm. could be something that happened in high school. What yep. would be a backstory that would show people how you've been groomed in a way? Yep. Yeah, and I've, I've shared this one many times, but coming from a household of abuse to blaming myself for a divorce to being jumped in and affiliated with gangs until becoming a drug dealer and a heroin addict to then cha choosing to change my life after almost getting killed in an armed robbery to joining the military, serving honorably for five and a half years, getting married, divorced, yeah. having two kids in that time, and then showing up in that relationship thinking I was okay, but I wasn't and being, a I think that's an builder. important part of your story. That's a huge piece. Yeah. yeah. And the reason why I think is because your ideal client might have gotten a little bump, yep. but they still have, they're still climbing that mountain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So I think that's an important part of your backstory. So backstory then leads into, okay, my trials. And then it leads into that. What's that? Um, it leads into that epiphany breakthrough moment right. which it sounds like is when you were in the house for three days yep <laughs> i'm the least common denominator of all my problems <laughs> <laughs> okay so yeah. then your epiphany then you talk about then the story to create transformation mm -hmm. i think it's important to mention um, coaches, mentors, uh, where you learned your modalities right. through this process, yeah. right? Transformation. Um, and then after we've shared the story, then we go, okay, here's why I do what I do. And this is why I believe that mm -hmm. your best version of you requires you to go through your, the, the depths of your darkness. Because mm -hmm. the infinite light of who you are requires you to go through that through that depth, right? Or what? Or whatever your why is. I'm just spitballing yeah. what I. I really like that. Yeah, I'm just spitballing what I've interpreted through you, and then the next one is okay. Here's the way I do it. Okay, the way is, in a way, have already been shown through your story, but again, how people make decisions is they feel something. And then now they seek for the logic to make it true. So you're almost like double whammy in that epiphany bridge in a yeah. way. Okay. Way. And you could even add the eighth one. Here's who I work with. Okay. And then painting into the possibility. So you're just integrating the four W's into the story. And then right. the way that I like to end it is uh, a parable. A parable, a metaphor, um, an analogy. Mm -hmm. um, a historical lesson. Um, Jesus had to go yeah. through the all the darkness of the world to be able like that could uh, jumps off the top of my mind. Yeah. Um, any other parables or analogies you like to use as part of your brand? Yeah, chop wood, carry water. Just keep showing up, even when it gets hard, even when it's dark. Like instead of taking your life, chop wood, carry water. Okay. Do the things that move the needle forward, and do the things that make you feel good and alive. Okay. Yep. One little thing too, before I jump on, um, what makes a really good story 
is to be able to bring them into the experience as mm -hmm. if they're experiencing that moment with you. Yeah. Versus I got dumped and then I <laughs> sat in my room for three days and after three days I finally came to this conclusion, I'm the common denominator of all my relationships. Mm -hmm. Versus I woke up that morning after just being dumped by my girlfriend. I feel like shit. I wait, I get out of my bed and I look at myself in the mirror and I can't even recognize who the fuck I am. Mm. So you're bringing them into that yeah. moment. Does that make sense? Yeah. I remember how vividly watery the mirror was through my fucking tears, through my red blazing eyes. There yeah, you go. I remember that. There yeah. you go. Okay. So, um, so now let's like pull this all back. Mm -hmm. And, and wrap this up as far as anything goes. Do you have any questions about this so far? No, this is great. Okay, so Super going simple. back, so now this is more of like the brand marketing stuff of it. So now we're getting into the brand marketing. So first one is really deciding, okay, what's the name of that community? Yeah. Okay, Instagram, Facebook, offline. So I would start with one online, one offline. What is it? What does it look like? Right, all those different things. And then the next thing I would be thinking is what is the, what is gonna be my main uh, lead magnet offer? So the main lead magnet is the thing that drives the biggest part of my business. What's going to be the free thing that you offer or give away that's going to drive these um, speaking engagements and um, uh, what do you, what do you refer to them as? Just lead magnets. No, your so you got your speaking and then you got your um, like my book and sessions facilitation. Yeah, you call them, you call them masterminds or events or breakthroughs or yeah, immersions. 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 Yep. So yeah, what's yeah. going to be the main thing you need to offer that's going to lead into these immersive experiences with these other leaders? Yeah, I think one main lead magnet for speaking is my uh, micro keynote okay. that I did. So I have a micro keynote. I also have a suicide survival guide suicide that survival goes hand in hand with my book. Okay. And then I also can think of a bunch of other things, but those are the two primary ones I've been focusing on lately. Okay, so we got our a micro it, keynote. Is it an ebook? Yeah, one's an ebook. Okay, so you got your presentation, your keynote. Yeah, one is just me talking. It's just on camera. So okay, I think what would be really cool to offer is some type of master class. Master class is a really good catchword these days. Yeah, I've got one on uh, emotional agility. Um, sweet. Um, master class around master class to help leaders facilitate three day retreats. Mm. Hey, are you a coach that want to do retreats? I have a framework that can help you do this. Mm -hmm. And then your pitch at the end of these right is always going back to that one-on-one -on -one conversation with you. Right. And the one-on-one -on -one conversation is, I wouldn't call it, what do you call it anything? The conversation? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Normally I do like activation sessions, like leadership activation sessions, Kay. alchemy sessions. Uh, so, th so that's where I'd play with the brand word of that session. Uh-huh. Right, I, I offer a leadership uh, alchemy retreat session. Mm -hmm. In this session, I'm going to break through some of the things that are holding you back from doing these events, or I'm going to give you a framework. Like now you're just taking what they've learned from a macro level and you're just getting super micro with it. Right. Okay. Um, and then I would come up with one other lead magnet and then now your posts. So then your posts on social media, or at least what we do is your first week of the month. Mm-hmm. All video reels, all posts are marketing ebook. Yeah. <coughs> Second week. Third week. Mm. 
and then fourth week, whatever you decide. And right. then you come back around to either what's coming up next. Like with us, it's like, okay, what event's coming up? So we're going to hit that, right? Yep. So the branding and business workshop. So I'm talking about branding and storytelling and, and everything. And then as you're doing it, um, you know, you want to make sure that you're, and I'm sure you're already doing this, is that you're putting it in a Google Drive. So let's say we got our um, retreat. So in Google Drive, we got our retreat masterclass. Okay, and the retreat masterclass is a folder. And then underneath that folder, you got, uh, you got um, first week. And under first week, you got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I usually do four posts per week. Right. Second week. And so now you're just coming back to these um, over and over again. Right. Does that make sense? Yep. So that way you don't have to go, oh, shit, I got to do content. And yep, yep, you're yep. always starting over. Yeah. You know what I mean? Versus yeah. coming back to... To, to what's learned so yeah um yeah any questions about that no that's really great and that even this is just creating a lot of clarity because even when it's kind of going over the, like this master class on um three-day immersions maybe it's like um something different but i'll get creative with that but this is a good framework and understanding of it because even the last one that came through was like my uh my knights in darkness, darkness armor assessment. Mm -hmm. So like, you know how there's like knights in shining armor mm -hmm. who are out there saving everybody. Yeah. There's knights in darkness armor or the parts of ourselves that are really the ones who we need to save. Yeah. So I have like now a clear understanding of how to lead magnets, how to structure them in the week, but then in the Google drive and then even creating like a notion and having, um, cause I, I love notion, but I can set it all up the same way and it's more visually appealing. Yeah. And if I was you dude, I would, um, and one of my mentors said this in the past. He he's like, I have a hundred thousand dollar coaching program. Mm -hmm. Now, has anyone been through that coaching program? Not yet, but it exists. Yep. And here's why it exists: because I want people to understand the greatness of my coaching and the value of it. Mm -hmm. So that way, when I offer a lower program, like an event that's three hundred dollars, they're comparing the three hundred dollars to the hundred thousand dollars of coaching. Right. So there's more of a, so it's just a branding thing, right? Yeah. So I would have your fifty, seventy-five thousand dollars coaching, but yep. dude, I absolutely believe with your story and with your modalities and just with where you're at, dude, twenty-five, thirty thousand, forty thousand dollar programs is not far from a consistent thing for you, dude. Right. I would lean into the addiction. Yeah. That's definitely been calling me. I mean, I built my suicide survival guide using the 12 step program. And instead of the 12 step for addiction, it was the 12 steps for suicide prevention. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And knowing that addiction and suicide run hand in hand, those are the two things that I battled with most. But like, personally, <laughs> right? I'm not gonna sell somebody a $50,000 program for suicide prevention. Sure. Right? Like sure. that is predatory as fuck in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's predatory, right? But with addiction, it's like, how much money is being fucking wasted on addiction treatment centers? How much money is going towards pharmaceutical industries paying for medically assisted ther medical assisted therapy to get people off of fucking drugs and yeah. detox how many people are battling codependency every fucking year and taking their life because they don't know how to source love within themselves and they put everything they love into another person mm -hmm. right like addiction is a fucking huge area and i i definitely resonate with that and that's like this is affirming because i didn't think i was qualified and right, well all the here's stories. what i think we go through sometimes we go i'm not far enough into the transformation to feel good enough to help them. Mm -hmm. But my question to you is how many days do you need to be sober and past it to feel like you're qualified? <laughs> What's the number? What's the number you have in your head? My number was 90, which Nin is five days away. 90. Okay. There you go. <laughs> and it, and I tell people it's not for me to say, you, it's not for me to do that. It's just for you to really put it into context. And I think, yeah. The, the conversation happens is when am I finally going to give myself privilege? Mm -hmm. When am I going to allow myself to be great? When am I going to allow myself? 
Right. Yeah. So, like I say, gaslight you into grace. Great <laughs> gaslight you into your greatness. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna be my tagline for addiction. I'm gonna gaslight you into your greatness. He <laughs> stop turning to drugs and alcohol. You know, we we talk about <laughs> gaslighting being this negative thing. I've you know, Definitely I've never thought not. of being a positive thing. Do you think that's dangerous to gaslight into greatness? Has anything great happened without a fucking delusional dream? It's true, right? Everyone had a delusional dream and everybody had to gaslight themselves into thinking they could accomplish it. Yeah. In my opinion. Yeah. It right. reminds me of that Steve Jobs quote. Here's the misfits, the rebels, the round peds and square holes, the ones who think, see things different. You can disagree with us, nullify us, glorify us, but the only thing you can't do is ignore us because we change things. And those who think that they are crazy enough to change the world are the ones that actually do. I might be a born again Steve Jobs, so let's just add. Dude, Tony I had Robbins that quote. Carl, I had that quote on my <laughs> wall forever, so I just fucking memor just internalized it, man. Yeah. What, well, dude? Um, yeah. I believe in you, bro. I really do. Like you're gonna do some fucking epic things, and the way you talk about it too, I think opens up people. And you talk about especially the darkness component in a way that's really inspiring for me because I talk about it, but I don't think I wordsmith it as good as you. I think mm -hmm. that right there it's um it's next gen it's unique it's different it's innovative and so if i were to say anything for you lean into that mm -hmm. lean into that part of it yeah yeah this is very for me good and this provided a lot of key pieces that i was missing cool so i just want to say thank you yeah thanks buddy very clear yeah bro and we'll we'll do some stuff together i know oh yes oh yes